Let's take a look at an example of adjusting brightness values in the photo, dodging and burning. There's actually dodge and burn tools built into Photoshop, and I never use them because I like a technique that involves a brush tool. It, it allows me to work on a separate layer, just has a little bit more flexibility, and it's just the technique that I prefer. So I'm going to share that with you. It involves making a new layer, but I need a new layer with special properties. So I'm going to hold the Alt key on Windows, Option key on Macintosh while I'm clicking on the Create New Layer button. That's that blank sheet of paper icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Because I'm holding the Alt or Option key when I click that New Layer button, instead of just getting a blank layer as we saw earlier, I will get a dialog that asks me, what do I want to do with this layer? What do I want the properties for this layer to be? So we'll give it a name. Dodge and Burn, very original, very creative name for the dodging and burning effect we're going to apply. Most importantly, I'm going to change the blend mode. I want to use one of the contrast blend modes. I use Overlay. Soft Light works as well. It's just a little more subtle effect. I'm not big on subtlety, so I go with the Overlay blend mode. And then I also want to turn on the checkbox to fill this layer with the Overlay Neutral Color. And the Overlay Neutral Color happens to be 50% gray. And so I'll go ahead and click OK. And now, sure enough, you can see that I have a new layer. It's a pixel-based layer. It's called Dodge and Burn. It has the blend mode. You can see the pop-up here toward the top of the Layers panel. That blend mode is set to Overlay. And the layer is filled with 50% gray. And yet, I see no effect at all in the image. I have all these gray pixels that are apparently accomplishing absolutely nothing. And that's because of that little checkbox Remember that it said the neutral color, which means the do nothing color. So in the context of the overlay blend mode, this middle gray value, that 50% gray value, has no impact on the photo. If this were the normal blend mode, then yes, we would have pixels covering up the photo, not the effect we were going for in this case, obviously. So I'll change that blend mode back to overlay. So if middle gray, 50% gray, does absolutely nothing, you can probably already anticipate where we're going with our painting to lighten and darken specific areas of the photo. 50% gray is our neutral value. Anything lighter will lighten up that area of the photo. Anything darker will darken up that area of the photo. So once again, I'm using my brush tool. Once again, I'll make sure that I'm using a soft edged brush. I'll adjust the size on the fly as needed. The blend mode up on the options bar, normal. The blend mode for the layer is set to overlay. That's where the magic is happening. The brush, I want to behave in a very normal way, in the usual way. I'm just painting with pixels. So normal blend mode for the brush itself, but I want to reduce the opacity. Generally speaking, about 10, maybe 15% when I'm using the overlay blend mode. Very subtle effect. I can build up that effect with multiple brush strokes over the same area. And in this case, I'll use 20%. That's a little bit strong, but it'll make it easier for you to actually see the adjustment while I'm working. Uh, but another handy keyboard shortcut for the opacity. Once I've chosen the brush tool, then the numbers on the keyboard will adjust the opacity of the brush itself. Pressing the number 1 will give you 10%, 2 will give you 20%, a quick 1-5 will give you 15%. So I'm going to press 2 to get a 20% opacity in this case. And then I'll increase the size of the brush here a little bit. Letter D on the keyboard again to get those default values of black and white. Letter X to exchange or to swap those foreground and background colors. I'm going to start out with white to lighten up the image. Maybe I want to lighten up the lion's face just a little bit, for example. What I'm going to do here, and it's very important when I'm painting using this technique, because I'm working at a reduced opacity, if I paint once, I'm adding a little bit of, in this case, white. If I paint over the same area again, I'm getting a stronger effect and again, and again, and again. So I want to make sure that if I want to have an even effect in one area, that I paint and hold that mouse button down and keep the mouse button down until I'm finished covering up that area. So for example, I'll click and hold, keep that mouse button down, and paint over the entirety of the face, perhaps. Maybe I want to uh, sort of exaggerate those fangs a little bit. I want to lighten up the mouth a little bit more. So I've already lightened up the mouth by virtue of lightening up the face. I'll reduce the brush size and come into the mouth area and click and drag and paint over the entirety of the mouth so I have a little bit stronger effect there. So it's important to keep in mind that when you paint over the same area multiple times, you're increasing the strength of the effect. You want to make sure that you don't end up with sort of a modeled appearance where you're kind of randomly and sporadically painting over different areas so you get little light patches and dark patches all mixed up. 
I'll go ahead and hit the X key on the keyboard to switch to black, increase that brush size a little bit. Maybe I'll darken up the edges just a little bit to kind of create almost like a vignette sort of effect, etc. So you get the idea. I can paint with white to lighten, black to darken, individual areas of the photo. I'll turn off the visibility for that dodge and burn layer. Generally, the effect I'm going for here is that when the effect is enabled, when this dodge and burn layer is turned on, it just looks good. Nobody looks at the image and says, oh, I see you've been practicing your dodging and burning. Because you don't want, you know, you want it to be subtle. You don't want them to actually realize that work has been done, because if so, it probably was a little bit too strong. But, to me, the ideal is that initially it doesn't really look like it's been too strong. Then you turn the layer visibility off just by clicking the eye icon to the left of the thumbnail for that layer. And you toggle back and forth. And, wow, actually, that's kind of a strong effect. I didn't think it was so strong. I thought I was being subtle. But it turns out I wasn't. And so that, to me, that's sort of the ideal, is that you've got a nice impact in the photo. You've kind of accentuated certain details or toned down certain details, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. But it's not super obvious when you see the effect just kind of at a glance.